When you first do research on the Adventure 4, everyone tells you this machine is not upgradable. Well, I'm here to prove you wrong. I mean, we're not going to be changing the entire hot end, but we're going to do some small upgrades here and there that will make your printing life a lot more enjoyable with the Adventure 4. Most of the design files I'll have on Thingiverse and I'll have those in the link in the description down below, as well as links to all the other components that I use, like electrical components, you can find those there. Now I have a very huge favor to ask from you, that is to just scroll down on the page and hit that like button. This will really help me out as a small creator to make more content for you guys on the Adventure 4 as well as 3D printing in general. Now the first upgrade that we're going to talk about is this light fixture that I made to go on top of the Adventure 4. Because there's a clear window on top of the Adventure 4, I printed a large square which I wrapped an LED strip around and programmed an Arduino to control those LEDs. I also spliced a USB cable so I didn't need an external power supply and I had many USB cables handy sitting around. Upgrade number two I've talked extensively about on this channel because it's the bane of the Adventure 4's existence, bed leveling. Although there is nine point calibration, I found that my gantry was actually curved. There's a bit of a bow in the X axis, which causes the center of the print bed to look higher than the edges. But in fact, it's the extruders actually lower in the center of the gantry than on the edges. So I've added shims to my Adventure 4 in order to help level out the bed. Upgrade number three is a software upgrade where I'm using different slicers. I use a combination of three different slicers outside of flash print right now. And really, I don't use flash print. I use Cura, Simplify 3D, as well as Super Slicer. If you're curious how to set up printer profiles for these three softwares, I've got a video which I'll link up in the top right corner. The fourth modification that I did to my printer was I printed out dual nozzles. Now, the dual nozzle design that I have doesn't always work, especially if you need a high powered fan. But in situations that it does shine is if you want power from both sides. I've got multiple iterations of this fan design which I've linked in the description down below. This latest one that I've done has reduced the amount of air resistance that it sees through all the winds and turns. I tried to keep the path from one side to the other as straight as possible so that you'd be able to salvage as much airflow to the right side of the extruder. The fifth and the sixth thing that I changed about my printer, these are kind of comboed together. One is the PTFE tube, I changed it to Capricorn tubing, and two is the actual pipe fitting. The reason why I changed the pipe fitting is, I'll show you in this video, whenever you're retracting or you're detracting, you can see the pipe fitting is moving here. And with the new Capricorn one, it's rock solid. The thing does not move at all, so it makes your retractions a lot tighter, meaning that you can actually use a slightly lower retraction distance. Now the reason why I switched to Capricorn tubing, again, is also to make your attractions a lot more tighter. The one that comes stock with a printer comes with a slightly wider diameter than Capricorn. And if you're using filament that's got some slight flex to it, then it can spaghetti inside of that tube. And that's the last thing that you want, because your attraction lengths have to increase, meaning your print time increases, as well as the accuracy of your attraction to reduce stringing decreases. The Capricorn tubing does have some slight drawbacks. For example, sometimes your filament can get stuck on the lip of the tube when you're trying to load it in. So for the most part, I actually manually load my filament in. And how you do this is that you press on the lever on the extruder unit, and then that will actually release the pressure from the idler pulley, and then you can just push your filament through. To be honest, it's a lot faster than the way that they have through software. It probably saves you at least 30 seconds, if not a minute of time. Upgrade number seven is putting lights on the side of the printer. And this is the one that I'm the most proud of because I actually hacked in the 24 volt supply, pulled that power and set up my own lights on the side so I could see what's happening under the nozzle. The overhead light is great. However, the extruder casts a shadow over top of the print and that bright LED doesn't actually shine underneath the nozzle. So these side firing lights help illuminate the entire build plate so I can see a bit more detail. If I really want a laser focused light, I still use my filming light, which I'll hold manually. But it's great to be able to have a switch that I can flick on the inside and just turn on these lights and see what's going on. The last and final upgrade that I have here is these feet that I printed in TPU. If you guys have used your Adventure 4 for just an hour or two, leaving it sitting on the table, you'll notice the little foam sticky pads on the bottom of the feet completely get squished. So basically you've got plastic on wood if you've got it on a cabinet, or plastic on metal, and that just transfers the vibration a lot more easily. So these rubber feet are to help slightly with sound reduction as well as to dampen the vibrations from the machine, giving you slightly cleaner prints. 
And that concludes it for all the upgrades that I've done to my Adventure 4. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have done any upgrades for your machine because I'd love to continue adding towards this fairly closed off system. I've got a couple of videos up on the screen that might interest you about the Adventure 4 and just general 3D printing. If you're there, I'll see you there. If not, that's a wrap.